Happy Wednesday, everybody. Good morning. I hope you're all doing wonderfully amazing. I have had a couple of questions over the last few days that I thought would be interesting to answer for you, both from clients and from external, that I thought might be able to help you. So as we know, one of the key things that we need to be building and learning and growing and practicing as we're growing our businesses, as we're growing our practices, as we're growing our organizations, is sometimes things don't happen as fast as what we would like, right? Or in the way that we necessarily think that it would or should go in the way that it should work. Now, I'm sure that this is not just me. I've been doing this for a long time and I was kind of like, well, you know, I should be in this place by now and we should be doing this by now and you know why is this thing not doing this thing that it's supposed to be doing and and all the rest of it good morning joe so i've had another client who said you know i'm just i'm tired of this up and down and up and down and you know peaks and troughs and things like that now a lot of this is to do with your mindset and the way that we approach whatever it is that's going on now I had this idea last week. Uh, I came off the back of something. It was, I'm, I'm not sure what it was that I read. I read something somewhere about the path that you're taking and, and things like this. And I guess one of the, one of the things that I've always held uh, close and I've always believed to be true is that everything happens for a reason. And sometimes when things are going a little haywire or going a bit pear-shaped, it's really easy to knee-jerk into self-doubt, it's really easy, or it's a lot easier to believe sometimes that the universe is against us or whatever is going on. Hey, Catherine, good morning. And I guess the thing here is that what if the question that I wanted to pose to you is this, what if those things that feel like roadblocks aren't actually even roadblocks. What are the things that we're going through that we're experiencing, that we're learning is the exact right path and it's we're working in the exact right way that we are supposed to be based on where it is that we're going. Now, to me, the reframing of that just makes me kind of go, oh, maybe it's not a roadblock after all. Maybe this is just the next thing that I need to learn. Maybe it's just the next thing that we need to go through. Maybe it's this the next, you know, this next thing that stacks on in terms of building resilience so that we can get to where it is that we're going in the best shape and the best way that's possible for us. So that's a really quick little um, hack that you can use. It works for me. It's like, well, you know what? Maybe this is just the way that it needs to be and, you know, we're doing okay. Just, you know, keep focused on that end game. Keep focused on taking a step that we can. Now, it can feel very frustrating. I know it can be really disheartening where you might have some months where the leads keep coming in, the sales come in, and everything goes awesomely, right? But then, uh, hey, good morning. And then what are, you, like, what are we going to do when that kind of comes back around? You know, it's really easy to sink into self-doubt, self-flagellation, uh, looking at the signs that may or may not be there and interpreting them to mean whatever it is that we've decided that they mean. Hey, Nat, good morning. So I think really uh, the thing that I really, really want you guys to be focusing on and really be thinking about is rather than going, you know, Whoo, and, and feeling like the highs are really high, because if we look at, uh, what is it for every uh, every action there is an equal and opposite reaction? Is it Newton's Newton's law of physics? I think, gosh, going back to high school science, you know the big thing that happens there is like if we've got these extreme highs, then generally in order for it to recalibrate, we can have these really what can feel like deep and extreme lows. So what we want to do is try and bring these two points. I still want you to feel the highs and the celebrations and the wins and the successes and, and celebrate the shit out of that because, you know, let's face it, there are not, there's not enough good stuff in the world that we're, uh, you know, that we should stop celebrating. I think, you know, we want to keep doing that. 
But then also what we can do when things do come back, if you feel like you're spiraling into all of that stuff, or my ads aren't working, or my webinars aren't working, or you know people aren't responding, or the engagement's dropped, or the algorithm's changed, or not making any book sales, or I'm feeling really tired today, whatever that thing is down here, we've got to have some hacks to be able to get us up and out. So the first hack that I like to use is, like I said, it's that reframing hack. So what if everything that we're experiencing right now is the exact thing that we need to be experiencing in order to set us up for that next phase? I was talking to my therapist on Friday and he was suggesting that maybe when things feel like they're bad, they're not actually bad, it's just the way that we are processing them, right? It's just the way that we're seeing them. So how can we flick it around and reframe it? Now I reframe everything most of the time, except when I'm feeling like I'm kind of down in, in this bit down here. So this is where it's really important that you've got that external support mechanism, whether it's a partner, a business partner, a friend, a mentor, a coach, um, a peer group, someone, it doesn't matter who it is, to be able to like see what's going on that you can have a, an honest conversation with and help you to see it the other way, right? So reframing it that way. Another thing, so that works on kind of like on the conscious mind, right? That works on the, on the very uh, front brain, you know, what do we need to do now to be able to move forward? The other thing that we can do is look at the, the energetics of it and the, and the emotions of it. So the only time that we generally sink into this bit is when we let our emotions rule the roost. So one of the questions that I would be asking myself and that I would recommend that you guys ask is, is this an appropriate, sometimes the answer is yes, is this an appropriate emotional response to whatever it is that's going on, or am I catastrophizing, right? Are you making things worse than, than what they really are? Now, if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling a bit depleted, then usually, you know, the answer is yes, because it feeds into the drama, it feeds into that frequency, and it keeps you kind of a bit more embedded down. So take yourself out of the situation and go and do something differently. So if you feel like you're in that, um, in that emotional kind of turmoil, get yourself out of your normal environment. Go to a cafe, go work outside, go roller skate, uh, you know, go do whatever it is that you need to do to get yourself physically out of that situation because motion creates emotion. Right, thanks Tony Robbins for that little number, I'm pretty sure it was him. So the thing that happens is that motion creates emotion and when we're moving, our adrenaline kicks in, our endorphins start kicking in, it starts releasing the dopamine and the serotonin in our brain, which then helps us to have the ability to be able to look at things in a, um, in a, in a much more, uh, I, I want to say analytical, and that's not kind of what I mean. It gives us a different perspective, right? So get yourself moving, get your body moving. Exercise is awesome, uh, going for a walk, doing whatever it is that you can to get moving and to get things flowing. So that's kind of like your physical thing. The next thing that I would look at is a salt bath. Now, this is one of the, the a really awesome little hack that I've learned from um, energy teachers over the years. And I, I really like this one. I'm a huge fan of, of baths, <laughs> bathing. So if you were to get a, you can buy in a supermarket or a grocery store, you can buy big bags of just salt, like cooking salt, table salt, it doesn't matter. It does not have to be Epsom salts, right? The the doesn't need to be expensive and what I what I do in a bath is I probably put if I've got a, a two kilo bag of salt a good 250 grams sometimes up to so a quarter of a bag sometimes up to half a bag of salt gets poured into the bath right now these things are like two bucks so it doesn't 
cost much to, to do this. Get that in, have a bath and soak in that for a good 15 minutes. What that helps to do is it helps to cleanse out your energetic field. It's really good for your body as well. And it just helps to shift and move. Some of you know how sometimes it just feels like you kind of got like gunk kind of hanging around and you, you, you're almost like moving through the air slower and you know it's like I imagine this is what it feels like when you're bike riding like if you're a man and you ride bikes competitively probably like the hairs on your legs you know slow you down so the salt bath helps you just kind of get rid of the gunk so that you can keep moving so we've got the conscious mind reframing We've got the physical body get moving, get the um, get the get the body moving because that helps to change the emotions that you're feeling, right? Make sure that you've got that external support network as well around you so that they can help remind you that you know you're, you're okay, you're doing good, you know this is what we need to do to move forward, and then also work on the energetic body. Hey Kelly, which is where the salt baths come in, and it's also really nice and really soothing. Um. That will help you. The next thing, once you've done those three things or you're doing these th three things regularly, the other thing that, oh, and then uh, reminding yourself that the, the path that you're on is the exact right path and it's helping you to build resilience. Yeah, I know. I wish we could all just be resilient already and just, you know, make it freaking work. But I, I'm slowly learning the, the, the art of patience. It's driving me crazy. Um, but just knowing that you know, you're know you on the right path, you're on the right track, what you're going through and what you're experiencing is exactly what's needed and exactly what's necessary in order for you to get to where you're going. You know, it's a little bit like if you're going to the gym and you want to build a, I'm not even gonna flex my arms because even if I did, it wouldn't look any different. So if you wanted to build really big biceps, right? You would go to the gym and you would get the dumbbells and you would start lifting weights. Now what that does, when you fatigue your muscles, it actually breaks apart the fibers, right? And then it's in the repairing and the rebuilding of those fibers that they start to become bigger, they become stronger, they knit together differently, but they've got a break almost before they can before they can get bigger before they can get stronger building resilience is the same and you know what it sucks it absolutely sucks because why should we have to go through pain in order to get to where it is that we're going but unfortunately that seems to be the nature of things so be be okay with things not always working but have these little things in place or working the way that we think that they should be. Have these little things in place in order to get you up and out of that dip uh, as quickly as you can. Also just acknowledge that sometimes that dip might be five minutes, it might be a day, it might feel like a week, it might be a month, whatever it is, breathe through it. The more you resist it and the more you push back against it, the harder it is to come back up and, and swing back up and around on, on the path that you want to be. Sometimes you need to take a step back in order to move forward, right? So that's that. So once you've got all of that down, we don't just want you to go, okay, great, that's great. You know, everything is happening the way that we want it to. We still need to take action. So when you feel like you, you, you've done that bit on the mindset, you've done the work, you're, you're ready to come and kick back up, now it's time to start getting into strategic action, right? And you need to know where you're going in order to make that happen. So what is one thing, what would be one thing, just one thing that you could do that moves the needle a little bit, that shifts just a little bit, that takes you that one step forward to getting you what it is that you want, one step closer to you hitting that goal? because it's in action that creates results, right? So we've got to be really, really mindful that you've got that um, ability to be able to take action, take a step, and then once you've done that, we'll take another step. And then once you've done that, you'll take the next step. And once you've done that, you'll take the next step. But the only way you're gonna to get to where you're gonna go is by taking action. Right, so make sure you're, you're taking action from a an inspired place, from a knowing where you're going, and and getting things done in that way. 
So that's me for today. Um, I've had, it, like I said, there's been a few people that have been like, this isn't happening as fast as what I'd like. You know what, sometimes things take time and things move so fast and we're so used to instant gratification, to turning on our phone, seeing a notification and, and making that stuff, you know, ha seeing this stuff happen reasonably quickly. Just remember that things take time and even though things are happening faster than what they ever have before, it doesn't mean that things are going to happen instantly, all right? So make sure you've got your expectations set in a really um, <clears throat> helpful way, all right? Cool bananas. Hey, Kelly, good morning, Tamara. Such a timely message, thank you. You're very, very welcome. All right, guys, have a beautiful Wednesday. I am going to be chatting with you tomorrow morning about something that you wanna know what to do. So if you've got some questions, hey Ryan, good morning. If you've got questions about anything to do with social media, marketing, business, mindset, hey Steve, hey Steve. Anything that you wanna know, let me know. Really super happy to answer them for you tomorrow. Um, and that's that. If you haven't registered for Spy School yet and you're coming or you want to come to the Gold Coast in two weeks time, let me know, just message me and we'll um, get on to that and we'll go from there. All right, everybody, have a really great day. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.